If you like to laugh, and who doesn't, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to My Funny House with the Powell Brothers. Frank Powell is a real estate broker who was born and raised in San Diego, along with Frank's brother Mark, a real estate broker who also lives in San Diego. Each week, the Powell Brothers bring in a special guest comedian to share hilarious real estate stories so you can learn what can go really right and what can go really wrong with home improvements and home ownership. So now, let's get into it with My Funny House. Here are your hosts, Frank and Mark Powell on The Answer San Diego. Hi, welcome to My Funny House. My name is Mark Powell. I'm sitting right here in the studio with my brother, Frank, Frank Powell. Say hey, hello, how's Frank. it going? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we, today, we're going to talk about something that uh, a lot of people have experienced in their in their lives, whether you own or rent, you've probably had some type of issues. It's called boundaries. We're not talking about personal boundaries and that kind of social, social distancing. No, <laughs> not your personal boundaries. We're talking about property lines and boundaries and what you can and cannot do on your own property. What happens if you um, encroach? It's called encroach on somebody else's property. So here's a question that I'm going to ask Frank. Okay, Frank, let's say yes. your neighbor builds a fence on the property line. However, he builds that fence more on your side of the property. So maybe six, seven, eight inches of that fence is on your property. Can you tear down that fence? Well, you can say, you can say thank you for building the fence. You know, yeah. if it's a nice fence, if you don't worry about it, if it's six inches, you know, you got to look at the whole situation. If you have like five acres and the guy's six inches on your property line. Correct. Uh, but if you live in La Jolla and the houses are, you know, three feet apart, or right. I should say Carmel Valley, and then that six inches matters. Yeah. So you have to look at the whole picture. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's definitely on your property, and you got to tell the guy, hey, listen, you're encroaching on my property, and you start it from there. Hopefully you have a good relationship, but I wouldn't tear down the fence. No, and I, and I don't think you can legally tear down the fence. You right. would probably, that would probably be something that would go to court. It's not, is it a crime, though? Is no, it a th that's the difference. It's not a crime, but it's a civil matter. Right. So you could take the guy to court and sue him, but it's not something under like the penal code where the cops are going to come there and arrest anyone. So if you call the cops and say, hey, this guy just built a fence on my property line, uh, a police officer is just going to say, well, you know, we can't do anything about it. You're going to have to take him to court. You know, I've had pro problems in, even, in, even in my own house where the neighbor's tree grows over into my yard and drops all of their trees and all of their needles and ev everything ends up in my yard. And, um, and I just say, you know what? I'm going to cut, I'm going to just cut that tree. Can I cut those branches that are hanging over in my yard? You can cut the branches hanging in your yes, or encroaching on your property. But if you jump over the fence and cut down this tree, you're going to have a problem. Oh, yeah. You know, like it's I'll, trespassing, isn't it? Well, it, it's, it's trespassing and it's rude and it's going to cause a conflict. So what we try to do, Paul Brothers will try to avoid conflicts Correct. by having resolutions. It's like you just go to the neighbors and say, hey, do you mind if I cut the branches or hang it on, on right. over? You're going to do it anyway, let's say. But it's easier to ask them and, and get the cooperation. Because once you put that ladder up and the, and the guy sees that you're uh, cutting down his tree that maybe he planted and brought here and it's a very special tree, that's when he got the, the bad reactions. So it's good to just to talk first. Some of these things can be really stressful. Super stressful. I remember this guy had a pomegranate. Pomegranates were hanging there, and you pick his fruit, and he got all upset. It's like, well, they're in my yard. Well, it's my pomegranates. You know, I did th you don't get too many right. pomegranates yeah. on this tree. Yeah, so there's another over. issue that they're hanging over. But those those happen all the time. The fence issue, we get that all the time. Right. You know what? You know. You know, sometimes these things can be a little stressful in real estate, and they can be a little bit um, overwhelming if anybody's ever bought or sold a house. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But just to help break the tension, we're putting together this show with a little bit of a twist, a kind of a funny twist. And with that in mind, I'd like to introduce our kind of guest host today. Her name is Maria Herman. And Frank is going to give us a little bit of information before we actually bring her on. Frank, can you tell us a little bit about Maria? Maria Herman is funny. She's a comedian. She's, she was uh, living in Point Loma. I think she just relocated into uh, Pennsylvania, it is. But she's toured with uh, Afghanistan. She's Yeah, she's she actually toured with the troops, hasn't she? Toured with the troops. I went over there. So and she runs, uh, she runs, she's going to tell us a little bit about some of the, the businesses that she runs here that have to do with comedy. Um, and also, one, one other thing, she's Australian. Ooh, she and has that cool accent. Yeah, and from oh. what I understand, she lived in a house that uh, that didn't even have a front door. Right. <laughs> and the outback. Hey, why don't we bring her on? Maria, are you there? 
I am here. Thanks for having me again, Gus. Thank you. Oh, thanks for thanks for being on the show, Maria. Can you just tell us just a little bit about yourself? Um, well, well, you seem to have covered most of the bases. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I like talking about real estate. Yeah, when I grew up, um, I, I did actually grew up in a shack and we didn't have any plumbing. I had an outhouse, and um, we. <laughs> Because I'm 90 years old. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that does sound like something from out of the boonies. But, um, yeah, I grew up with two pet kangaroos. Um, that's all. Uh, uh, yes, and then I came to America, and they're like, no, we don't do that here. <laughs> you, have, <laughs> you have a regular toilet and a kitchen and all these things. Oh it's very gosh. veg. Very nice. Um, and, yeah, I run uh, Comedy Heights. I uh, co-produce with my partner, Al Gabby. And uh, we've been doing that for almost 10 years, and um, uh, a lot of local people have been to our shows. They're a lot of fun. And um, and the guest comedian that I'm going to be bringing on um, in a little bit, who's joining me today, has headlined for our shows many times, and he's one of San Diego's favorites. So I'm, I'm excited to have him as my guest while I'm your guest. Maria, I want to ask you a question. We, we just yes. talked about, you know, fruit hanging over into your property line and can you pick that fruit if you had to select some type of fruit hanging into some fruit hanging onto your property line what would you prefer it to be i i would prefer the fruit that's right that's in the kitchen on my neighbor's uh, kitchen counter <laughs> if, if i was going to pick something i would just sneak over and get that no, no i mean uh, <laughs> the one that's growing, no, fruit. It's fruits growing on the tree, and it's um, it's hanging on your property line. Um, I believe that you can pick it, but can you pick a fruit off of um, a tree that's hanging on a on a sidewalk? Like it's growing over the fence, it's hanging on the sidewalk, and you're walking by and you see this fruit. What can you can you take that fruit too? I think I'm going to take all the fruit. I'm going to take all the fruit. <laughs> That's what I say. Just take it. Or if I could do it, because if there's a chance I could do it, I would like I would take it. <laughs> and I'm up for the challenge. I don't. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And I and I I think a lot of people would. But the funny thing is, is that a fruit is growing o over on the um on a property line. It is actually on the public street. It's actually still kind of the uh, owners. But when it falls off, I guess it's free picking. But if you like picking fruit off off the ground, I don't think there's too many houses where you're going to pick the fruit off the ground. the The thing about boundaries is like, how do you, Mark? How do you get these boundaries? How do you know where your boundary is? Because a lot of times you're you are building fences and you want to do some construction, but you don't quite know where the property line is. Everyone looks for that little penny in the sidewalk. Yeah. Sometimes that's off too, and sometimes they don't have it anymore. Well, there's so where do you find there's these a couple lines? ways you can find it on your plot map. You find that on your, and you can also find it on your deed. And if you can't find your boundary lines, let's say you're living out in, an, in one of the uh, rural areas, you can hire a professional surveyor. Right. And a surveyor um, will, will go ahead and set all those lines and marks for you. It costs a little bit of money, um, but that's how a lot of people do it. Yeah, that's worth it. I did that on my property. I live in University City, but I live on the edge of a canyon. They say, you, you own some of the canyon. I don't know how much I own or what I can do with it. So I had a surveyor come, and, uh, and it ends up being a really big piece of property. But the funny thing is, after I bought it, I realized I can't do anything because it's on naturally protected vegetation, which means you can't build a gazebo right, down no. there. You can't extend your yard. Correct. You can't touch it. So you're paying all this taxes. Well, that wasn't disclosed to me, but I just blew it off. I was happy. You know, I lived on the canyon edge. I didn't care. But that's another thing you got to really check in is where are your boundary lines? Where are those lines, and how do you find them? And I think title companies provide that. Title companies provide um, title maps. insurance. Um, so if you bought a house and you find out that your neighbor has encroached on your property substantially, like maybe had b even built a building or structure on it, that's what title insurance is for. It's for something that happened um, in the past. Uh, auto insurance is for, hey, I might get in an accident, so it's something that can happen in the future. Title insurance for a house is what happened in the past that you weren't aware of. 
Now, I'm curious. Now, you had mentioned that uh, somebody, you know, would have a dispute over somebody building a fence on a property line. But is this happening while they're asleep or while they're at work? <laughs> Suddenly the fence appears. <laughs> I mean, don't funny. you go out there and go, is that, wait a minute, that's six inches <laughs> off my property line. And six, I'm a guy. Six uh, inches means a lot to me. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a true story. Well, but you're, you're absolutely right. And people do do that. They... <laughs> Unfortunately, Mark and I have been doing this long enough to go, hey, this guy's going to be at work for eight hours. Throw the fence in right now. And, you know, you put in yeah. that quick cement, you put a post up, oh, you yeah. put your lines up, you put your fence up. Before you know what you do, you come home and there's a new fence. And the guy goes, why are you upset with me? There's a new fence. And then you kind of realize later, hey, this is, this is on my property. We sold a house um, that had some trees growing over on the person's property. When the guy was at work, the, the other owner... Um, hired gardeners and cut the and said, "Hey, just go over there and cut the guy's trees down and cut the other person's trees down without permission." And he acted like he had nothing to do with it. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, that was crazy. Yeah. Well, that that does sound like the kind of thing I might have done in the past. But listen, <laughs> um, but listen, yes. uh, but listen, um, would it be? Uh, I would love to introduce my guest comedian so he could weigh in on this as well. Would that be? Absolutely, cool absolutely. Bring him in. And he's, he is one of my favorite people in San Diego. And he has a new special on drybarcom. Please make him welcome the very funny Jesse Egan. Hey, hey Jesse, Thank how you. are you? Oh, hey. good. Oh, wow, Jesse. you got a standing ovation from yeah. everybody in the studio. From Van Amazing! Wow, it's my first one in nine months. I um, way more than that. Uh, th I've learned so much already, you guys. I'm excited. Uh, because my neighbor's tree is hanging over my property, a.k.a. Uh, my car. And um, <laughs> I'm just wondering about my rights, because I opened up a little lemonade stand, and I've been juicing those lemons that have been dropping on my car and selling the lemonade back <laughs> to the kids of the family. Is that oh, legal? <laughs> what are my... That's a good one. I'm not great with boundaries. I've also been squatting in their treehouse. Um, <laughs> when they went to work earlier, I built another wing on that thing, and I'm not sure if that's yeah, okay. The, the west wing. Uh, that's questionable whether it's encroaching or not. That's that's funny. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I need you know, to know. It's one of it's one of the uh, hot issues if you're buying a house anywhere because our houses are close together. Everyone wants to get every inch of what they bought, which they're entitled to. But it's funny how people will take the backyard, and even though they'll never use it, they don't even know. And they find out that it's like a foot or six inches on their side. What they'll do and the expense they'll pay to get that six inches back that they will never use. It's, it's, but it's, it's. Hey strange. Jesse, let me ask you a question just about that stuff. Yeah. You, you, have you ever? Is it about six inches being no. huge? Because yeah, six <laughs> inches is really gigantic distance. Hey, it matters. I, exactly. I've been told that before. Yeah. So I just, it matters. Hey, I want to reiterate: six hey. inches is. Okay. We're so, over. Hey, think about this, Jesse. Have you ever parked your car and had like tree sap from somebody else's tree fall on your car and just kind of screw up your car? Now, is that? What do you do about that situation? You know. I've been trying to make maple syrup out of that, actually. I'm, I really do a full-on uh, MacGyver deal here in my neighborhood. Um, yeah, the, I haven't had that happen, but I can imagine that, uh, you know, if the tree, I guess, what, what do you do then? You, I, my other thing that I liked, by the way, your advice, I liked when you said, firstly, that's trespassing, which is a crime, and also it's rude. I yeah. thought that was funny because it's like, well, but first the crime, right? So is uh is it rude to go in and say hey your sap is ruining my car? <laughs> <laughs> or do you, <laughs> or do you have to? I mean, like, here's my other question. Yes. If they can build a fence right on the property, can I build on top of that fence? Can I extend the fence? Oh, you know what I'm I, saying? Actually, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. You can extend the fences. There's height limitations on how far you can go. I know the front of your yard is like, what, six six feet? Is depends, I guess it depends on what your neighbor looks like to determine yeah. how high you want your fence to be, you know? <laughs> no, you can, you how, can high, how high were you thinking, Jesse? How high? Well, I was just, I wasn't even thinking going higher. I was thinking of horizontally, like making a little <laughs> patio up there. Um, <laughs> they already did the foundation work, and I'm just thinking I could sort of, sort of have a bivouac up there. <laughs> 
and uh, hang out on top of their fence. Do you think that would be encroachment? Well, I think the, the rule is if you're building a fence on the side of the house, it can, it can be six foot high, and you can add another two feet, but that other two feet has to be 50-50. So it has to be like a trellis. It has to be 50-50. You can see through lattice. it. Lattice. Yeah, lattice. So it can't be solid. So actually on the side up to a certain number of feet towards the sidewalk. And that's why people grow bamboo because there's no limitations. Yeah, yeah, that's what you do. So instead, you know, or, or the uh, Italian cypress, you know, you line it up and, and that, that's not a, a fence. It's a natural, uh, a natural yeah. growth, and they go 50 feet. You can bro so grow bamboo as high as you want. Right, so there's, there's ways to get mm. back at your neighbor if you want. Uh, the best thing to do is get along with them, but I know how it is with some people and their neighbors. It's just like a nightmare. But I think uh, planting vegetation is better than putting up a, a brick wall or, or a wooden fence. It's, it, because you, know, think, you're, you don't get blamed for being rude. If you mm. have that many problems, you can't really call them a neighbor anymore. At this point, it's the person next door. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this, exactly. This word neighbor is just being taken completely out of context. It's true. It's it's unbelievable the amount of um, amount of feedback we get from neighbors. You know, like so much easier. To well, get here's a question them. that has to do with the fence again, because fences seem to be one of the biggest issues that people have. If somebody does build a fence and it encroaches on your yard, so it's actually on your property, can you tear the fence down? Hmm. Jesse, what do you think? Well, I think if it's made out of bamboo, the best <laughs> thing to do is to purchase a panda and have the panda. <laughs> deal with all of that <laughs> and then you're and then you're off the hook right? i think maria had you're a panda has a panda <laughs> no that was a koala bear oh, mark a koala yeah. koalas I, I pandas agree. are from china that's right oh, yeah. <laughs> non-marsupials no i don't know is a koala marsupial yeah are they i think so yeah. oh, okay i know kangaroos we have around. a marsupial here it's it's the um possum oh, okay it's, it's, it's kind of ugly looking animal possums you know? yeah. 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 Oh, i didn't even know that they look like oh, yeah, they have that tail. They hang upside down from trees. And uh, what about if there's a possum on your fence? Can you shoot it? <laughs> hey, you know something about trespassing or, or encroaching? So here, if if a cat, let's say the neighbor's cat, comes onto your property and you put the cat in your house, um, mm -hmm. are you st is that is that stealing a cat? Are they encroaching? Oh, that's a good question. What do you think? Mm. I think it's stealing a cat. My cat was just missing for three months. I just got him back a couple days ago, and I suspect that someone was keeping him because he was in National City, and I know the cat didn't drive there himself. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think it's stealing. I mean, this is a funny thing really about bringing up a topic I'm passionate about. Don't be taking my cat. Uh, although I do take care of my neighbor's cat. My neighbor's cat is always in here because they left. They gave me their litter box, so. The neighbor's cat is very bad with boundaries because he comes in here and leaves me a present that I don't want. I'll tell you something funny about cats Wait. and dogs, cats versus dogs. A cat you can not own. It's a free traveling animal. So if you get a nice cat, uh, this, this, there's just a case in the local news. You get a cat, the cat lives with you, the cat decides to jump over the fence and go in your house and you start feeding it. Then the person comes back and goes, hey, I want my cat back. You can actually keep his cat. It's, it's no. Oh, yeah, that's true. You can't do it with a dog, but you can do it with a cat because they're free because traveling the animals. Free will, the, yes, the it's a free will. To be right. If the guy oh breaks God. into your house and steals your Siamese cat, you got a problem. That's different. But if the cat goes to your neighbor's house and you put up a bunch of signs with, hey, lost cat, and then they, and you mm -hmm. see the cat in the window of your neighbor's and he says, I'm not going to return it, he can actually keep it. It becomes a civil uh, matter. Isn't that crazy? That's that's yeah, true. that's ridiculous. Yeah. Jesse, did you say that your neighbor gave you the litter box? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why exactly, and I, I cleaned it out I really think, good too. I don't think they uh, want their cat. <laughs> it's a very yeah. If you're feeding it, 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 go ahead and let it. You know, you're feeding it. And it's crapping in my house. Let's keep it at your house. <laughs> it was a very odd Christmas gift. I'll say that, but. Um, <laughs> Well, because she didn't have a cat. We went from <laughs> cats to koalas to more soup pills. I'll tell you why boundaries are, though. Boundaries are probably one of the most important aspects of real estate because when you purchase a home, what you actually purchase is a bundle of rights. So you get a bunch of pieces of paper that are stamped and notarized in this and says, you own the land from this point to this point to this point to this point. That's about it. 
That's what you get when you purchase. You own the structure on it too, but essentially when you purchase a property, unless it's a condo, you are also purchasing land, you know? So how far does your boundary go up? Like how how far does your property line go up? Well, it can't go up that some high because you're going to hit an airplane. Have, uh, some places don't have fences. What do you guys do in the case where, you know, people share – uh, the yard and maybe like one person keeps mowing farther and farther over and maybe they think the farther they mow that's their yard is that, <laughs> that's, uh, is that ever a thing oh yeah yeah you know um now the way they the way that the city you know the city is checking out people's homes see if they're encroaching on city properties they fly drones over your house and if they see your fence line encroaching into like maybe some type of open space that's owned by an electric electricity company or a water company well it's more like uh, also building an illegal uh farm or, or, or a house or a stable they've been doing that in east county where they're finding structures that are not suitable for the fire conditions right and so they make you tear down your barn and so yeah. you have to make sure that if you're going to buy a property with a barn on it that that property has a permit because all it's structures not, should it, have permits all structures but you know these these ones are huge and if they don't have a a permit then then you may have to tear it down the county could come after you so a lot of people that weren't worried about it because no one's going to come on their property now have to worry about it because the county has these drones that they fly over and that's how they enforce the uh those buildings what do well, you guys think about be, uh, that's going to be a real problem when we're trying to make meth out there yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't care about the meth. They just care about the building that yeah. you're building. <laughs> the meth is in. You have to have your meth building You're going to have to move the meth lab. You turn on that lab and get a permit at two minutes. Look, as long as I pay for the permit, isn't that what they want? Don't they want the <laughs> yeah. money at the end of the day? There you I'm go. Sorry. <laughs> just give them the permit yeah. money. So here's what we're yeah. doing. We're going to wind it down, and I really want to thank both of you guys. This is, a, this, is the, this is just funny. You're talking about fences and how far it can go. So people ever wonder why you should hire a real estate agent, right? You want to hire a real estate because you want to have a home inspection. You want to have your property lines inspected, right, too. Absolutely. You want to make sure what, what you're buying is what you're buying because it could be the opposite. All of a sudden, you buy something, and the neighbor goes, you're encroaching on my property line. Right. You and don't then, own that. You don't own that. And then it becomes a big issue, and that's happened as well. So uh, either way, you want to make sure the fences are where they're supposed to be, the boundaries are where they're supposed to be, and you're actually getting what you Well, that's what, why what you hire the for. Power Brothers. The Power Brothers will make sure that uh, that uh, doesn't happen to you. Power Brothers make sure it doesn't happen. We make it happen. Anyway, one more time. Maria, how could, how could the crowd get a hold of you? And then we'll go to Jesse, because that's important, too. Uh, I know, one I know, minute. I know right now with the uh, COVID situation, everyone's on lockdown, but it's going to eventually, with this, you know, hopefully the vaccine, you're going to be back out. So how can we get in touch with you until then? Maria, we'll start with uh, you. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm on social media, Maria Herman Comedy. Otherwise, uh, Comedy Heights is the show to look for. Um, I think we'll be back up and running once this lockdown is over um, at our sh regular show on Friday nights in Chula Vista. So uh, check me out there. And thank you for having me. Thank, thank you, you so much. Jesse, really quick, how do we get in touch with you? Well, you can uh, catch me in my neighbor's treehouse squatting most <laughs> nights. Uh, but if you want to find me on social media, it's at Jesse Egan Comedy on all social media and uh yeah check out my special it's called that's the spirit on drybarcomedy.com thank you thank so you. much and it's the power brothers and power brothers realty yeah, my funny my funny house power brothers realty.com thank you for tuning in next week we're going to bring on another comedian surprise guest and we're going to let you know all about that thanks so much for joining us today for my funny house with the pal brothers right here on the answer san diego Join us next week as the Powell Brothers bring you more funny stories of what can go really right and what can go really wrong with home improvements and home ownership. And bring the laughs to you with yet another hilarious guest comedian. To find out more about the Powell Brothers, be sure to check out their website at powellbrothersrealty.com or you can visit myfunnyhouse.com. Again, thanks for being with us and we'll see you next week for My Funny House on The Answer San Diego. All right, good job. Right, thank you, guys. Maria.